Hey. So this one is live, I believe. I have three different cameras I'm kind of like using right now. So um, put a zero down inside the chat if I'm live, okay? So I'm gonna be, here is my second Facebook group. Here's my main Facebook group. Here's for our YouTube channel. So I'm gonna be like in three different locations. Um, but today I'm gonna be talking about how my mentee received $3,000 in new revenue from our local star process. Okay, so I'm gonna be breaking down like what the person did, what are the most important aspects of you know this business model, and how can you start growing, getting better quality clients the same way this uh, student did. So I have some notes. And again, I have a number of different cameras me looking all over the place. So forgive me if you like, if you maybe like um, if I'm not looking right at you when I'm talking. It's just because I have a lot of different things I'm looking at at the same time. Um, and the, my student actually did this without going to like networking events, without doing cold calls, without having to go and do like postcards in the mail. This is just how we go about doing it. Now, if also, if you've seen any of our videos or if you want some help growing your business or maybe even starting your business, but you're just not really sure what you need to do in order to go and reach your goal and you know that if you had some guidance, you'd be able to go and reach your goal a lot faster, go ahead and click the link inside the description either above or below the video to book a call with myself um, to see if I can help you inside of our mentorship program. Cool. So first thing is really proper planning is going to allow you to reach your goals a lot faster than hard work ever could. Okay, so one thing that I hear a lot of people really struggle with is that they're working very, very hard. Like they're like maybe maybe they're doing cold calls. Maybe they're like knocking on business owner doors. I know when I got started, those that's what I was doing. I was working very hard. I would drive like 30 minutes to go to like networking events, or I would do like 40 cold calls in like an hour, or I would go and um and like message people on like. Upwork and do like job posts, same thing with Craigslist. I was working very hard, but I wasn't really making any progress, any consistent progress at any time, at like any at any stage inside the business. And I was thinking like, you know, I'm working so hard. Like if I'm working this hard, why am I not really making much much progress. It just felt just like I was kind of wasting my time. If I, if I was really honest, it just felt like I was wasting my time and I got like really, really frustrated. It wasn't until I started learning how to be more strategic with my business that our growth became more and more steady and more consistent. So first thing is like planning, okay? So ideally what you need to do, let, let's say you're working at your job right now and you are trying to end up leaving your job. We need to know, number one, how much income do we need to be like bring in or to leave our job consistently like comfortably? Number two, we have to then think about how many clients we need on a monthly basis in order to go and reach that goal. Number three, we have to start thinking about like how many consultation calls will it take in order to hit that number of clients. Then number four, our next thing, right, is going to be how much work and do we have to do to actually go and find those. Number five is going to be like, what is going to be our platform of growth? Okay, so we're going to dive through each one of those. So let's say that your average client value is going to be about $600 per month and your, your goal is like $10,000 a month. That means you need about 16.67 clients. We're going to round it up to 17 clients in order to go and get to that $10,000 per month mark. Okay, so the next thing is if you have that many, like you need that many clients, how much time per day do you actually have to, number one, grow the business assuming you have no clients, but then number two, like to actually do the client work, right? Because once you, in the beginning, like you're not gonna really have that many clients, so you have a lot of time to go and build your list, be able to talk to people, get on the consultation calls. But as you start getting more and more clients, you're gonna run out of time, right? So there's kind of, you have to know how much time you have and start really shifting and like um, dividing out that time based on how much work you actually have, right? Because I mean, once you get, once you get to probably about like seven to about $8,000 per month, you have to make sure that whatever marketing method that you were using to be in the beginning to actually get up to that, like, you know, seven to $8,000 a month can carry you for the remaining $2,000 a month to get to 10,000 a month because you're just not, you're simply just not gonna have that much time to do the accounting work yourself, especially if you maybe didn't price it out correctly. So always understand like how much time do I have? Now, and one thing that some people do really struggle with is really understanding that you don't need that much time per day spent on like marketing and sales in order to grow the business. In terms of sales, I always have the students in our mentorship program really focus on getting one to three consultation calls per week. Okay, that's all you really need. Now a consultation call can take anywhere from 15 minutes to about an hour, just kind of depending. Now in some cases you might need to do one call and the person's ready to go. In some cases you do two calls and the person's ready to go. Um, I was thinking out loud. 
you really, another thing too is like really understanding who is someone that resonates with you once women versus men sorry I had like an epiphany <laughs> as, I, as I was <laughs> saying this out loud I just had like an epiphany and a flashback of like um what's an easier way to kind of grow your business so like so so you have to know who responds better to you so there's you can these are called like niching right so there's a bunch of different ways you can niche you can niche based on the service you offer so like if you only do bookkeeping you can niche based on the accounting software you use. so maybe you only use quickbooks you can niche down based on the industry you can niche down based on personality you can niche down on gender so maybe you get along way better with men than you do with women right maybe 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 even you might not do, you might do good with both but you might notice that when you talk to men it takes you one call and they're ready to go versus you know maybe someone else they might take you two or three calls maybe vice versa too right maybe you're just, maybe you're maybe you're a lady and you're really in tune with like with 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 women and what they're thinking they just love you and they want to pay you as much money as possible right i mean that could really work for you it just really depends. I was just kind of thinking that out loud as, as I really was like going. I was like, oh yeah, that, that's another dimension of niching that I never really thought about. But it definitely is something you can test out to kind of see. Um, you can niche down based on if they apply to ads or if they want to come to you organically. You can niche down based on like location. So you can only niche down to your state. You can niche down to your city. You can niche down to your country. Um, doesn't really matter, right? Your region, etc. But really having that plan, understand it's not always about how much time you are spending. Okay, so one one person asked me a number of years ago. They said like, okay, if I if I you know quit my job today and I have zero clients, I just spend forty hours a week doing this stuff. Like you know, how long will it take me to going and 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 like really reach ten k per month or eight k per month or whatever? I'm like, well, it depends. Like, what are you doing for those forty hours a week? I mean, just just being completely honest. In the beginning, you don't really have that much activity to really require forty hours a week. When when I was really growing the business, I was putting about 30, 30 minutes a day messaging um, prospects on LinkedIn. I was spending about an hour responding to prospects on LinkedIn. I was spending about 30 minutes to an hour making content. I was talking to referral partners for about 15 to 20 minutes per day. Um, and then I was doing about one to two consultation calls, right? So what does that equal? I'm just gonna kind of add that up. So what do you say, 30 minutes, Outreach, 30 minutes responding. Okay, so that's one hour so far. Next, it's going to be, what do we say? Um, consultation calls. We'll say one per day, so that's one hour. Okay, so now we're at two hours spent. Another thing is going to be referral partners. So I'm actually having this conversation. We'll say 30 minutes for those. Client work. The client work is where the majority of your time is going to be spent. I um, should probably auction out by like two hours for that. Um, and then also client meetings, right? So I like doing about 30 minutes um, per week per client with meetings, right? That's just what I like doing now. In the beginning when you have clients, like your clients are gonna wanna talk to you more in the beginning. Then once you kinda hit a good stride, and like a really comfortable kind of pace, then they're gonna wanna talk to you a lot less. But you do need to make sure you do account for that, right? That That's important to account for. Um, so what is that? That's one hour, two hours, three hours, about five hours right there that you can do. Now remember, in the beginning, if you don't have any clients, okay, well, you're not going to have two and a half hours, you know, per day on, on this stuff. Like you're not gonna have any client work to do. You're not gonna have any clients to do like client meetings with, right? And then in most cases, your outreach and your response time, like in the beginning, I was doing an hour. You can really get away with like 15 minutes to about 30 minutes. But you have to use a lot more automations. Now, when I was first getting started, like the schedule I just told you, I wasn't using much automations, right? Because I just, I didn't know about automations when I was getting started. So I was doing a lot of stuff more manually. Nowadays, I do two things. So I use automations, like when it comes to LinkedIn to actually go and start the outreach process for me. I also have virtual assistants that manage like my inbox and like respond for me. So I don't even have to look inside of that. Now, virtual assistants, that's a totally different conversation for a different time. It doesn't have to be expensive to get a virtual assistant, by the way. I mean, you can get them for like anywhere between like three, $3 per hour to like $15 per hour, right? And like the difference between a $3 per hour virtual assistant versus like, like a $10 per hour virtual assistant is not really that much if you understand how to train them how to understand like who is who um, there's a lot of different factors around that but that's the next thing but if you notice we only spend about one hour on marketing 
right? And then we spent about 30 minutes, about an hour and a half during that day on either marketing or partnership calls. That's not that much time. I mean, you can't really spend 40 hours a week just like on LinkedIn all day. Like you, there's the platform number one won't let you send out that many messages. Number one, number two, I mean, you're not really gonna get that many responses in the beginning. So I mean, you're just gonna be sitting there looking at your phone, probably getting distracted by Facebook. So what I'm saying is it actually might be better for you to actually have a job when you're starting your business because then you learn how to use your free time to go and get new clients. Now I understand you might not have a lot of free time. I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way. What I'm saying is it makes it very easy for you to start learning the mechanics of your business while you're small so that you can start really understanding how to utilize your time. Then when you do eventually quit your job, you can just maintain your current pattern, but you just fill up the extra 40 hours that you gain, sometimes 50 or 60, depending on like what you do for your job, you can fill it up with your client time, right? So now the prospecting hours are pretty much the same, but the only thing that changes is the amount of time you're spending on client work per week, and now you can take on a lot more clients and you can grow, okay? Now when it comes to this planning, right not only do you have to be planning but the next aspect of your strategy when it comes to time management is next going to be how to utilize your time to go and get the best number of clients that not only gives you your first client but also keeps giving you more and more and more clients over time so that it gets easier to go and grow your business so you're not constantly having to go put in a lot of energy and a lot of effort into this thing right so number one i'm thinking about my lead sources so you've heard me talk a little bit about linkedin on this thing now i actually like using linkedin plus referral partners right so what does that kind of mean so on linkedin you can go directly after clients you can go after referral partners I prefer, like when I'm beginning, like when a mentorship student is beginning, we use LinkedIn to go after referral partners because it's easier to get people on the phone, people have leads, they can send you better quality clients, you don't need to be as skillful as if you're going straight directly to a client, right? Because if you go directly to a client, you have to understand like who are you selecting, what's the industry, how much money do they have, are they really looking to go? Can you have a really good messenger conversation? Can you get a good back and forth? Can you follow up with them? That's a lot of different steps. And like when someone's in our mentorship program, like we do teach them that, but it is a lot harder than just going after like referral partners who can send people to you. So we're always thinking about like, what is the easiest way? Cause remember strategy, strategy. What's the easiest way to go and get the outcome I want so that I don't need to spend a million hours doing that. So number one is lead sources. I like LinkedIn right because it just gives me better quality research so I can research a partner before I actually go put my effort my energy and my time in actually talking to them okay next thing is gonna be size clients okay so the reason why I'm going to when I'm thinking of clients right client size is important because it's going to determine your level of involvement it's going to determine your client work, the volume and the complexity. It's also going to determine the personality of your client. It's also going to determine the amount of headaches that can come with a client. Now, what do I mean by that? So generally larger clients are going to pay you more because they have a higher volume of work. If you're doing accounting or bookkeeping, they also have a much larger budget. So a company that's doing like 90,000 a year top line versus a company that's doing 900,000 a year top line, I have totally different, different mechanics, different problems, different situations, different owners, right? Not to say that someone who's making 90,000 a year is, is, is better or worse than someone who's making 900,000, but they are different. Or at least the $90,000 one hasn't had the chance to kind of become the $900,000 per year person. So they're not bad, but I'm just saying when you're starting out, you want to be very selective with who you're actually talking to and working with. So another reason why it's important is because, right, the larger clients will pay you more. So that means you need a lot less clients. In the beginning, we did that math equation where we said, okay, it's about 16 to 17 clients we need to get to 10,000 a month. But that was based on $600 a month as your average client um your average client um price point right so what if you got that up to a thousand okay well now you only need 10 clients so that's less it's about seven less clients that means you can actually get there a lot faster what is that that's a 30 that's 30 percent less clients that means you get there 30 percent faster okay same thing if you if you went to we'll say two thousand dollars a month right is your average client value because now you need five so now originally you need 17 but now you only need five. What is that? That's like a 60 to 70 percent um, decrease in the number of clients needed, right? So you get to, you'll get there 60 percent faster to your goal. Same thing with five, right? If you go to five thousand dollars a month, your average client value you need two. 
right? So that, that's it's getting exponentially easier to reach your goal because you need less clients and thus it's gonna take you less time because you're, you don't need quite as much marketing or quite as many consultation calls to going into that goal, right? So again, strategic, strategic. That's the name of this, day, of this value in this video, is strategic, okay? Another thing, clients that are generally between like 500,000 to about $5 million are generally less chaotic than clients that are doing about zero to about $200,000 per year or sub sub 500,000. Now, the the exception to that rule, and every rule has an exception, is that the companies that are like 500 to 5 million that are trying to grow, that can be chaotic, but it's chaotic for a different reason than probably what the companies are here. The companies that are here, they're still trying to find their footing in the market. They're trying to understand like, is, is their business viable? Are they gonna be here two months from now? They might have cash flow issues. The owner might be a little bit more stressed. The owner's gonna be actually doing the work themselves. The owner's gonna be a little bit more busy. The owner's a little bit more overwhelmed, right? So it's a, it's a lot it's a lot more of a tumultuous, emotionally um, kind of part for the owner you're working with, and that can cause you to be a little bit stressed out too, because in a lot of cases, if you're not trained on how to not absorb the owner's overwhelm, it can cause you to be overwhelmed, especially if they're calling you and texting you, and they need a report, so they need to know exactly how much they make, because if they didn't, if they don't know how much they make, they might have to overspend something, they, they're busy, their bank account goes down, now they're panicking, and they're freaking out versus a company that's more of like, we'll say like a million dollars a year, they're generally a little bit more relaxed. They can have more of a forward thinking. They're, they're, the more money someone's making, the more like stable the business is, the more that they are looking into the future of like, you know, when are they ordering, let's say inventory? When are they going to be paying their contractors? How are they going to be structuring their business? What is their position in the market, right? And they can kind of take more of a strategic view and a strategic look rather than always being in survival mode. Now, again, when they start growing, that, that's gonna change a little bit, but it's not gonna be really stress because they don't know what they're doing. It's more stress that things are breaking, okay? The stress of things breaking in your business is a lot better stress than stress of, am I gonna be in business tomorrow? So you have to understand like what is that trade-off when you're dealing with those clients because that's going to make things a lot more fun. Like, so it's very fun when you're dealing with a client who um, is at 500,000, they know they can go get to a million dollars, just like tighten a couple things up and they know exactly how much they just spend on advertising. If they had better financial statements, like that's a really fun kind of client because you can really see someone's life change right in front of you and you get to be a part of that client's like, you know, life-changing journey. So I really enjoy that part of the process. That's really why I love like accounting and bookkeeping because you're working with success people as they're growing right like imagine if you can like work with like Elon Musk when he's first getting started with his business like that's awesome it's a fun place you get to be excited you get to be energized with your clients and that's that's just amazing in my opinion um, you know cool next thing is local okay so networking and how to do like marketing without having to go to networking events the problem with networking events in my opinion and this is just from from me when I was doing networking events to grow my bookkeeping business number one the time of day so it's they're always like in weird times either like at six o'clock which is like dinner time if you have a family it's really hard to do that or they're during like the middle of the day it's not like it's 12 o'clock like middle of the day it's either like 11 10 a.m 3 it's like it's just at weird hours right so if you have a full-time job it's hard to make those especially if the networking event is like 30 minutes away from your job because like you don't have time to drive maybe do the event and then come back to work, right? It's always during a weird time to like take time off work or to like, you know, pretend it's like a doctor's event, whatever the case might be. I don't know you in this situation, but that's just, you know, it's what I had to do. <laughs> so, um, it's just weird time. And then the other thing is like, it's really hard to predict who's going to be at the event. So you take all this time, you finally get to the event and then like, it's just a bunch of like business owners that are just getting started. Right, because those are the people that want to network. Those people who are trying to grow their business. Right, the better way that I like doing, and this is called like the local star process, is learning how to utilize LinkedIn, making the geography of your search going to be like local to you, and start getting referral partners there. Then, if the referral partner wants to meet with you in person, you can schedule the call at a time that's convenient for you. Maybe it's the weekend. Maybe it's this. Like uh, two weeks ago, we had a um, he was a person that does taxes. He just wanted to come and hang out at like lunch times. So we just went out to this like restaurant. Okay, that would be considered, I, in my opinion, that could be considered like a networking kind of situation, but it was not a networking event, 
right? So we networked, we talked, we saw who we could send to us. Um, we saw how we can help them out. We talked about like some you know tax clients that we 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 offer taxes in our um, company. So it's like that's something new we offered like this year. Um, but like in the past, we used to like refer a lot of like tax business, and we just started saying like, eh, it's not like it's that much harder. So we just started doing taxes um, this year. So like. We kind of talked about like the remnants of some of the people that we'd be thinking about referring or if it's someone like it's just a complicated tax situation we just don't want to do ourselves anymore right then we would still refer and he wanted to give like leads to us but it, it's just better it's just more convenient and you're actually dealing with someone that can send you leads like we literally got a lead um i think it was about four days after we spoke after we had like the the initial conversation so we had a, a conversation on the phone then we went out to uh, the lunch. So from the time we spent on the phone to when he sends the lead, he sends like the lead the day after lunch, but it was really based on the first conversation we had with them. Um, it was actually really cool. I'm just like really grateful, but it doesn't have to take a lot of time, okay? And it's just about being strategic. So a lot of selection had to go into like, who is this person? Is this person able to help us out? What does this person's business kind of look like? It, how much revenue are they doing? Do they have like clients? Like, what does that kind of look like? And then our plan, our goal for not only ourselves, but every single student in our mentorship program is you're trying to shoot for 10 referral partners. So 10 referral partners that can send you between one to four consultation calls over the span of like a year in order to get between 10 to 40 new clients. Now, difference between 10 versus 40 clients is pretty monumental, um, but it's just for most people, that's a very safe range. Most people, they get to about 20 clients, they're generally gonna be at six figures, and then from there, they can choose they wanna stay at that same spot or they wanna keep growing, right? Because not every single person wants to be at 30, 40 grand per month, right? Some people really just wanna be at 10K per month, enjoy their life, and just have like a really good standard of living without having to really worry about money or like worry about, worry about their bills. So it just kinda depends on you and your situation. And if you wanna learn more about like our marketing on our YouTube channel, we have like a lot of different tutorials. But if you wanna just kinda of skip those trial and errors, and just skip all the videos and just get like straight to the source, straight to exactly what you need to do to grow your business, go ahead and click the link inside of the, of the description, either above or below the video, depending on where you're watching it, to see if we can help you inside our mentorship program. Everything we talk about in these videos are stuff we work on inside of our mentorship program because that's the stuff that I know the most, the stuff that I know the best, and it's just the easiest way for me to be able to go and take you from step A to step B, which is generally going to be you at your goal. So if that's you, if you want to see if I can help you out, click the link uh, either above or below the video, book the call, let's see if we can help you out inside the program, okay? On the call, we're just going to take a look at like, where are you right now? Where do you want to go? What does the path look like for us to achieve that together? If it makes sense, we'll talk about the pricing, we'll talk about the structure, and we can get started towards your goals, okay? So if that's you, love to see you on the call. If you're not quite ready, that's A-OK -okay too. I will see you inside of the next video. Take it easy, talk to you soon, have a good one.